I remember, I remember I was going down, I was going down, down into the water. Oh, my daughter, <laughs> I remember, I remember I was going down down into the water left me in the water they took my mother oh my daughter i was going down down into the water let us go into this ritual, this ritual based on a Hindu prayer. Wherever you are, you might want to mouth it. Repeat after me. May my body be cremated to holy sacred ash. May I anoint myself with ash. May my breath merge with all that is. May I remember all that I have done. May I remember, may I remember, may I remember all that I have done. Regina, don't be turning that. That's my favorite soap. I was watching that. Yeah. Well, you ain't watching it now. Who gives a fuck about the days of our lives? Regina. Why can't you have respect for other people sometime? All my children is coming on next and I fully intend to watch it. I need something to calm my nerves after all the excitement we done had around here this morning. Yeah, you do. Mama Pearl, did that lady really kill her baby? And because of some crack? I just don't understand it. She did it, trust me. But it wasn't because of no crack. It was because of that man of hers. Yeah. If the truth be told, she smothered that baby to get even with him for leaving her. Check it out. Check it out now. This is what I heard. This shit is too real. Check this shit out. Bitch. We threw. Because you finished. You to the curb. Your ass is out. You ain't nothing but a dope fiend. And all I care about and want is my baby out of this motherfucker because you a dope fiend. Ha! Now she the dope fiend after this motherfucker brings the shit in the house in the first place. So, you mean they was tweaking? Yeah. That's the scent of it all. They all out of their minds on cocaine when he decides he's going to leave her. Poor thing. I hear she loved that man. She loved him with a hungry love. Oh, Deborah ain't no stupid woman, y'all. She got a degree from Berkeley. Had a good job. They used to be happy until they started fucking with that shit. That's why I don't do no dope. I really love my kids. And no man could ever make me do something like that to my kids for all the love in the world, Doris. Don't ever be talking about what you won't do, darling. You keep your eyes open and you keep on living. Yeah, because I done seen some motherfuckers do some strange shit in the name of love. Well, fuck love. Love kills, and this shit is too bad that it had to happen, ain't it? Love is the motherfucker. Come on, come on, I want my MTV shit. Who are these women? And what are they to you and you 
and you. She's our mama. She's your lover. That woman's the woman who's going to carry your child. They wear my mother's face. My sister, my daughter. And now if I'm to believe statistics, my granddaughter. You know, working in the jails, I, I didn't delude myself and pretend that the time I spent with these people is gonna make a whole lot of difference. <sighs> Their problems are too great, too immense. Benign neglect, alienation, isolation, blind rage, living in some township just outside of America. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Greetings to the Center for Hellenic Studies. And thank you all so much for this invitation. Now you have been listening to an excerpt from my seminal work, Big Butt Girls, Hard-Headed Women. My solo performance, Exploring Life Behind Bars. You met Doris, a thumb-sucking teenager. Regina, a battle street hustler, and Mama Pearl, the crone. What you just experienced was life in the day room, the day room where women gather to socialize, watch television, and gossip. I was hired by the California Arts Council to teach aerobics in the city jail in San Francisco. And there began my work as a social activist. It was at the city jail that I first met a young woman who had murdered her baby in response to her husband's decision to leave her in the face of her addiction to crack cocaine after he had given her the drug in the first place. Now, this young woman's interaction with the other female inmates was harrowing. She was being escorted to the showers and flanked all sides by deputies and the women, the other inmates had turned into self-righteous harpies, gashing teeth, tears flowing, raging and struggling to harm her. Get that bitch, that baby killing bitch. Let me at that bitch. I, you killed my baby, bitch. Classic drama in a modern day room in an American city. The name for my company, the Medea Project, Theater for Incarcerated Women, was born with the retelling of this story. What are the ways that we are killing our children? This incident reminded me of the myth of Medea and Jason, the killing of her and Jason's children, the classic woman who had loved so much, too much, and then was betrayed, abandoned by her man. I'm still haunted by the sadness in her eyes. I am Rodessa, the daughter of Estella, the granddaughter of Flossie and Anna, and the mother of Sandra Lee, the grandmother of Chaz Nicole, and now the great-grandmother of Azel Anu. I'm also the founder, artistic director of the Medea Project, Theater for Incarcerated Women, the HIV Circle. Living in some township just outside of America. My earliest experiences with Greek drama with myths came with my father, a migrant crew leader, and my mother who together they decided it was time for us to come off the agricultural trek and settle in upstate New York. We were a large family, eight children in total in that farmhouse, five boys and three girls. My mom and dad had bought this large drafty farmhouse with some acres of land and they set out to be dirt farmers. I remember the other farmers showing up with 
boxes of books for us. Books with beautiful drawings, paintings, exquisite leather bound, gorgeous wood prints, books. It was in these books that I first saw drawings of Demeter and Persephone. Looking back, I remember how mysterious Hercules was, as well as Atlas balancing the world on his back. I was no more than eight or nine years old, and I remember long winter days looking at the pictures, the lush, lush images. We didn't have a television until 1965. There were piles of books, Grimm's fairy tales, Aesop's fables, Western classics, my father's favorite and glittering piles of Greek mythology. I remember seeing Persephone being abducted by Hades in his beautiful, awesome chariot. Persephone dressed in some lacy flowery confection. Meanwhile, she's being swept away by a dark man under distress. All winter long, our school vacations were full of our imaginings about these stories. What was going on in this very different place? This was my first encounter with Greek mythology and other literature. Living and growing up in rural America, we attended a central school in upstate New York. This was education in the late 50s, early 60s, education designed to fortify everyone with a very good basic learning, Mark Twain. Victor Hugo, Charles Dickens, Zane Gray, the Bronte sisters, DJ Solinger, and Laura Ingle Wilder, to name a few. Just a part of my early education. Alongside home economics, history, business, gym class, choir, art classes. And as black folks in, rural, in a rural community, a German American community, my brothers studied German, spoke German, and we all touched on Latin and my sister was immersed in it. She understood it very well. It was, it was a very good beginning, but back to my early life, my classical literature education began at home with books, boxes, books, boxes of books found in barns and attics. I remember, I remember, I remember I was going down, down into the water. Oh, my daughter, down into the water. When Persephone went missing, Demeter, her mother, roamed the earth in deepest grief asking everyone, have you seen her? Have you seen my beautiful child, my daughter? I heard her call to me, her cries piercing the air. Have you seen her? Wandering each day of her grief more terrible than the last. And she finally discovered where her daughter Persephone was. She had been abducted, raped by Hades, king of the underworld living in the land of the dead. In examining the myth of Demeter and Persephone, we went into the Medea project. We all were immensely attracted to the book by Chanel Miller. Chanel Miller, who was the student at Stanford, who was assaulted by Brock Turner, another student at Stanford. And this was uh, part of uh, what she wrote. It's, we, titled, we entitled it Emily Doe's Chair Dance. And uh, this is Chanel Miller speaking to Brock Turner who assaulted her. She says from, from the courthouse, from the, from, the, from the room, she says, you don't know me, but you've been inside me. And that's why we're here today. The night it happened, he said, he thought I liked it. I tried to push it out of my mind, but it was so heavy, I didn't talk. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. If a girl falls down, help her up. If she's too drunk to even walk, 
and falls down, do not mount her. Do not hump her. Do not take off her underwear. Do not insert your hand inside her vagina. Exploring Inanna's story, descending into the underworld. This was a piece written by a young woman by the name of Tiffany. Tiffany interpreted Inanna's story simply as long memories, past ways, long and narrow. I walked down my block called death. I've been sold gave up all along, might lose my mind, save the day, didn't have power, get through the night, candlelight. I've been running, my baby gonna scream, no time for playing, candlelight. My eyes closed, warmth dying out, to make another turn, headed away, headed away, my past. Long memories, strong fight, still in holding, still holding on to candlelight. I am from, take it as it comes, get it how you live, stack chips and stay away from loose lips. I'm from, girl, where did you get them shoes? And how did you pull that dude? How did you get that car? and my so-called friends hating from afar. I am from hood parties, getting drunk off Bacardi, everybody getting at everybody. I am from, ooh, my baby's daddy makes me so sick. Baby mama getting clowned by baby daddy. I'm from the sounds of motorcycles, vroom, 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 racing up and down the streets. I'm from shoot 'em up, bang, bang, where we slang to maintain. I'm from a block of ballers, players, shot callers, dead or alive. Those are the things we did to survive. That was written by a young woman by the name of Denise Washington, exploring life and death which takes us to the three fates. Here in this world, your body is a sacred garment. Think of your body like a piece of cloth woven to hold you together throughout your life. A tapestry holding your immortal soul. Because of that, we on earth revere the fates. They are called Lucy, Chloe and Addie. They are the spinner, the weaver, and the cutter of the threads and cloths of our bodies, our lives. Now Lucy, she is the goddess of beginnings. She's right there when you're born, spinning the thread that becomes the cloth of your life. She rules your birth, how long you're supposed to live, and your health. Then there's Miss Clo. Miss Clo is the one that pulls out the length of each thread, decides how long and what kind of life you get to live, how much time you got in this world. And finally, there's Addie. Addie, who in one hand holds your life's thread, and in the other, a pair of scissors that cuts, ending your life. She rules the end, death. She's often misunderstood. People are scared of her, but no one ever takes her for granted, nor her sisters. For all of us have this in common, people, to be born, to live, and to die. Working with women with HIV, we created a performance entitled Dancing with the Clown of Love, AIDS in the time of the 20th, 21st century. 
And uh, out of this particular um, myth and work, we found uh, a song, because there's always a song, and it was written by Mary Shell Hammer, who was a wonderful artist, poet, writer. Uh, and it goes like this. Dear body, listen up. You got HIV and a lot of other stuff. You got mountains to climb, things to get over, forks in the road, knives in the back, hurdles to jump, stumbling blocks, things to fall into, major obstacles, disappointments to accept, unpleasantness to face, wonders to unfold, mysteries to solve. Oh, so get ready. Let's do it. Do it fast. Do it slow. Do it right, do it up, do it in the moonlight, do it for free, get paid to do it, do it for yourself, do it for the world. HIV, so what? Girl, just do it or it won't get done. Sister girl, listen up. A big shout out to the women who came to that particular workshop and helped me create along with the Medea Project, uh, Dancing with the Clown of Love, because they all brought their status. They were all HIV positive and we ended up writing and dancing and singing about it. Big love to them. And that uh, would take us into slouching towards Armageddon, which, uh, which we explore the myth of Pandora, which I'm, I'm not, uh, Pandora is so complicated. I'm not even gonna get into Pandora right now. Other than that, I think she was terribly misunderstood. I think all those dudes, Zeus, Prometheus, Apollo, all them are standing around with beef of their own. And because Pandora was really a goddess, she was standing around too, looking at them. And so they decided they were gonna diss her. And we're led to believe that she was given some box and, brought, and was, was supposed to take it to, the, take it to the world. And it had nothing but darkness in it. And the sisters in Africa, Oshun, Yemanya, they were saying, girl, please. Them brothers ought to get themselves together because Pandora brought the light. She was a goddess. She was one of the mothers of earth. She brought the light and consequently brought us hope. And I, you know, we're working on a whole thing about Pandora, the Medea Project. And uh, can we get there by candlelight is the piece that I uh, read about descending into the underworld. And now uh, that was the anonymous. And Dancing with the Clown of Love, as I just told you, was really about exploring HIV with women who were living with HIV. And it's been an incredible ride. And it always brings me back to the modern myths, the myths of my own life. The gypsy told my mother, I'm gonna wish you well. The gypsy told my mother, you're gonna London hell. So call on your man, he's buried in the snow. It's your son, I'll be a taken. Well, and then I go, yeah. Well, and then I go. The gypsy told my mother, oh, I'm gonna wish you well. The gypsy told my mother, oh girl, you're gonna burn in hell. So call on your man. He's buried in the snow. It's your son, I'll be a taken. Well, and then I'll go, yeah. Well, and then I'll go. Modern myths. We would create our own myths. This one comes out of hearing my mother who had 19 pregnancies, gave birth 19 times. My mother would speak of giving birth as crying life into the world. I cried that child into the world, she'd say. So this is a piece entitled The Birth of the World from a performance, a solo performance of mine, The Resurrection of She. Shadows are falling. Shadows are falling all night, splintered cold. The night splinters and I was standing there. I was standing there with the others and this man, this man threw back his blonde head and he sang, 
Good Lord, I feel like I'm dying. Lord, I feel, I feel like I'm dying. Are we dead yet? Did we die? Did we try to die? Shh. My mother was standing in the middle of the room. Still shapes, silence like stone. My mother stood in the crack night and it wasn't my mother's face. 50,000 women stood in that yard. Honey, hush, 50 billion cries. You feel me? She was standing in that yard calling on God. Who's God? What God? The boy threw back his head, girl, and we all stood around and he sang to the heavens, oh Lord, good Lord, I feel, I feel, I feel like I'm dying. Are we dead yet? <coughs> Are we free yet? My mother's face was not my mother's face. It was another woman who watched her dreams fade, fall into a pile of bodies. Where is this play? Bones are scattered everywhere. I'm scared. Did I die? You know, I killed that man because I could. Yeah, I said it. I killed that man because I could, sir. What did you say? I said, I killed that man because I could, sir. What did this woman say? I said, I would do it again, sir. Across the room, a woman stood and she pointed at me and she said, sister, I know you. I know you. making art on the other side of the world. The water is rising. Heavy air. Tears are filling the hold. The weight, the heat. The rocking, the water's boiling, heavy air, the chains, metallic taste in her mouth. The water's boiling, the chains, metallic, metallic taste in her mouth. She's screaming, gray straining, glistening in vomit. I am ashamed. Where is this place? Bones are scattered everywhere. Somebody's daughter is crying. Heavy air. modern myths and myths from other places. When I started to explore menopause, I had to deal with insomnia and I'd be up late at night, I'd turn 50 and I would be up late at night and I'd fall asleep and this character would show up with the derby and the painted face and my hairdresser who was Haitian, she'd say, Oh, Rodessa, that's Lord Getty. Lord Getty is trying to get in touch with you. Lord Getty has something to share with you. And I'd go back to the jail and I'd ask the women inside about menopause. I'd ask them about insomnia, but they were in lockdown and they admitted to me that they were in lockdown. They suffered from uh, menopause, but they were also HIV positive. And I'd sleep and Lord Getty would show up again and again, and again. <laughs> well, 
Mm. Mm. I've come for your chickens, people. Oh, I've come for your hogs. I've come for excitement. <laughs> oh, I've come for it all. Don't ask me no questions. You know, she was born to die. She wants to be a warrior. Don't ask me the reason why. <laughs> she's looking at my uniform. The girl, she seems quite glad. She wants to know me very well. Ha! I'm the best friend she's ever had. So follow me, little warriors. Let's walk out that door. Oh, there are things, there are things <laughs> that you're after. And by God, by God, I'll show you more. What time is it? The city sleeps. What of gods and ghosts? Would you recognize them on a city bus? Oshun, the mother of civilization is walking the streets this night. Would you know her? Would we know her? Kali is sitting with skulls all around her feet. Could she be sitting in a park somewhere right now, mumbling, complaining about the workload? And who are the acolytes? What of human sacrifice? Could it be that the streets, the shelters, the jails, the parks, the transient hotels, the emergency rooms, abandoned buildings are nothing more than 21st century temples of consecrated offerings. In the early hours, watching the millennium approach. In the midst of desire, disease, death, and destruction, we pray for guidance. Oh, yeah. We rush to temple, to church, on our knees. We light candles, we chant. In this time of desperation, alienation, and disaster, we fitfully build altars. We would even make our own deities. Deconstruct to reconstruct the goddess. And how would we name her? What are her songs? Where is she? Is she the one? The one hiding, is she the sister right here? Esfotia, Esfotia, goddess of those caught between a rock and a hard place, enters Christina. Hello, Miss Jones. Miss Jones, my name is Christina Williams, and I found your flyer at the Iris Center. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to tell my story. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I've been using for 30 years, Miss Jones. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am. You know, I'm glad I got this virus. Oh, I, I know you're going to laugh, but, you know, now I feel like a movie star. People are finally talking to me, Miss Jones. I'm, ne I'm nearly 50 years old, and finally people want to hear what I got to say. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with crying. My therapist say, if you don't fight, if you don't argue, you got to release one way or the other. You know what I found out? I started telling everybody, I'm HIV positive. And you know that don't stop a man or a woman from wanting to have sex with you? 
You know what they say when I tell them. They say, so, shall we honor you? What is her sacrament? Stay on the line, people, because here comes Vila Jones, the double yellow line. He has to come in the bathroom. Excuse me, excuse me. He thought I was just that stupid, that naive. By the time I was 15, I told him if he ever put his hands on me again, I would kill him. By the time I was 24, I started to date him. My father. Yes, my father. When I wanted to get fixed, I'd go to him. And he was going to give me the money. I'd work him like a trick because he treated me like a whore. And sometimes I'd promise him the pussy and I wouldn't even give him the pussy. We're not, we're not just born bitches, y'all. A lot of stuff happens to us. And now, wow, I got HIV. I mean, wow. Let me see your hands. It has been said that at the end of our days, the great mother will sit at the gates of heaven and demand to see your hands. For it is believed that everything you've ever done shows on your hands. A good life, a bad life, a sad life, a battered life, a violent life. They also say that old Mr. Bones, that is I, <laughs> Oh, Mr. Bones, the god of death, the keeper of the cemetery, sits at the gates, and I will choose who passes through, when and where. What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? And yours? And yours? And yours? Oh, I've come for your chickens, people. Oh, I've come for your hogs. I've come for excitement. I've come for it all. Don't ask me no questions. You know, she was born to die. She wants to be a warrior. Don't ask me the reason why. She's looking at my uniform. The girl, she seems quite glad. She wants to know me very well. I'm the best friend she's ever had. So follow me, little warriors. Let's walk out that door. There are things that you're after. But by God, I'll show you more. By God, I'll show you more. We've just been witnessing my solo performance deep in the night, examining insomnia and menopause. And, uh, and, and aging gracefully. <laughs> this presentation is based on my methodology from my upcoming book, Nudging the Memory, that I'm presently completing, assisted by Hamilton College, uh, former professor and classics member, Nancy Rabinowitz. Nudging the Memory is a response to the frequent inquiries regarding the Medea Project's process from students, teachers, social workers, drama and family therapists, representatives of law, representatives of law enforcement, and of course, artists and activists throughout the world. Nudging the Memory will document the creative process of my work with incarcerated women and disenfranchised populations, especially women living with HIV throughout America and the world. And I plan to create Nudging the Memory as a theater handbook of performance exercises, writing explorations and performance material that will be used in the creation of autobiographical theater. Because it's time for us to tell each other our stories. You hear somebody's story, you are changed forever. This will be the creation of autobiographical theater for female offenders as a means of re-entry and restorative justice, all as a part of a woman's journey home, back from the edge. It will discuss the genesis of, of the plays and chrono chronological of them, but it will not include all the scripts. That's another book. This, document, this documentoir is a part 
of my autobiography and the description of the journey that brought me to the culture of women. It will aid others in giving voice to the voiceless and empowering the powerless, hopefully ennobling all of us. I remember, I remember going down into the water. Oh, my daughter. And I'd like to thank Alex, Alex, uh, Alex, who is a professor here at San Francisco in Classical Studies. And she's a member of the Medea Project. And she is my best bud. We have a great time. And uh, Alex is also working on a piece about trans people in jail, using mythology, using Greek mythology to look at the trans uh, community, to look at trans people, to inform trans people that there's nothing new. And uh, I'm so glad that Alex is along for my ride and all of the Medea people. Thank you, Medea Project. Thank you, Iju Sakamore. Thank you, Sonia Tolson. Thank you, uh, Lana. Thank you, thank you very much. And everybody that came, thank you, my sister Jahari. Thank you, my daughter Sandra and my granddaughter Chaz. Thank you all for being here with me. I remember, I remember I was going down, down into the water. Oh, my daughter. I remember, I remember. I was going down, down into the water. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And that was